I'm here with uh, Jack Hart today, who's the chairman of the Irish Writers' Centre here in Parnell Square in Dublin. Good to meet you, Jack. Good to meet you, Paul. Good to be here. Uh, Dublin is actually quite well served when it comes to resources for writers. On last week's show, I was talking about the Irish Playwrights and Screenwriters Guild and chatting to its CEO, David Kamla. And it's great that the Writers' Centre is here as a resource for all writers in Dublin and in Ireland. So to ask what might be a kind of an obvious question, uh, what is the purpose of the centre? Well, uh, there are many purposes. First of all, it's uh, a, a building, a centre that is identified with writing. So if anybody has any question or wants to make contact with living writers, they know that they can come here and uh, either make contact through the centre here or will be put in touch with whoever they want to uh, contact. So that's one purpose. The other purpose is that it uh, promotes writers and writing in Ireland and develops writers and writing in Ireland. Um, both purposes are served uh, extremely well and in great detail here in the centre. Um, but the building itself is an absolutely beautiful building and we have it constantly alive with uh, activity, with the events, with readings, with book launches. Uh, so it serves a multitude of uh, purposes and uh, I wouldn't go so far as to say writers are well served with resources in Ireland. I'd uh, question that very, very much uh, because even the Writers' Centre here is hanging on to existence because of a huge amount of voluntary effort. Um, so we do need much more resources, much more investment in writing in Ireland. That's yeah. That's, I mean, that, that's fair enough. I I, I think kind of what I meant by uh, well served was the fact that the centre and the the guild actually exist in the first place. But I I do agree with you that even though they exist as entities, they they could probably be you know be, 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 there could be more going on, which kind of in a lot of ways it kind of comes comes down to kind of money and and funding and all that sort of thing. Um. So how, how did how did the centre come about in the first place? It goes back to, would you believe, 1987. I set up the Irish Writers' Union in 1986 and I had a twin objective of getting a house in Dublin which um, would serve both as a base for the Irish Writers' Union but also for other organisations and would also provide the kind of artistic uh, activity that uh, writers badly needed at that stage because there was very little available in the city. So in 1987, the following year, um, Charles Hawhey was elected um, Taoiseach and Anthony Cronin was his uh, arts advisor. And as it happened, Anthony Cronin was uh, a, a member of the union. So I rang up uh, Anthony Cronin. As soon as he heard my voice, he says, Jack, he says, before you open your mouth, the word is there's no money for anything. So uh, the story <laughs> was pretty much the same then as it was now. Um, I said, no, no, I don't want any money, Tony, no, uh, but I have an idea. I'd like to run it past you. So I said, are you sure you're not going to come in now and be looking for money? And I says, no, I promise. So I went in and I saw him and I says, the civil service is shrinking. They're vacating all kinds of wonderful Georgian buildings all over the city. They can't afford to maintain them. They can't afford to sell them because nobody wants them. I said, I want one for a writer's centre. So he looked at me for about two minutes and his face lit up and he says, that's a bloody great idea. And from there on, we were sailing. Uh, at the end of that year, that was 1987, the lottery was launched and I put in for um, a grant towards converting whatever building we got. So we got 100,000 out of the first divvy out of the lottery. And uh, eventually then we uh, we teamed up with uh, Dublin Tourism. Matt McNulty was developing the Dublin Writers Museum here in Parnell Square. And he offered us number 19 if we invested the money in the reconstruction of it. So we did that. And in 1991, the two buildings were beautifully restored and it's been open ever since. Excellent. That's that's a, <laughs> that's a great story. To kind of, and it goes back so far. Uh, and so it's, it, and it's, it's brilliant that you kind of, 
you said the first thing you did, you picked up the phone and you and you made a phone call, and that's kind of that's the only way you, that we can really, you know, get these things done. That they're they're not they're not going to happen by themselves. You kind of have to be very very proactive. Um, on the um subject of writing itself, writing in in this country, do do you think that the centre has contributed to the quality of writing in Ireland? I'm sure it has. It's very difficult to gauge uh, what quality is or how it is affected. But um, over the years, we've been running all kinds of professional courses, you know, from beginners to advanced and professional in the sense of guiding people how to, you know, how to prepare uh, a manuscript for uh, a publisher. Uh, and we have had many people who came as total um, ingenues uh, to the centre and ended up with book deals. Uh, so it has, I think, contributed enormously uh, to the overall um, the overall scene. Um, yeah, the the the, the 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 resources that you, you know, that, that you mentioned obviously is is going to you know, if if not directly contribute, um, but certainly indirectly, so you have so courses and you have writers groups and all that. Um, I said I, I'm actually going to be doing a, a show in a couple of weeks, um, uh, talking specifically about writers groups. Um, I've always been a fairly you know vocal advocate of, of writers groups and a member of a couple of myself. What do you think the value is of a writers group? I think they can be very valuable. It's absolutely up to the individual whether it is useful for him or her. Uh, that's a judgment call that each person has to make. But an awful lot of people do find them good. First of all, uh, they provide a sort of support framework for them while they're doing the work, especially in the initial stages when they're beginning. It also provides a first audience. So you read out your story, your poem to your years and it you get a reaction it's the first airing of that piece of work and you know first of all there's a great satisfaction from it secondly you will get feedback whether it works whether it doesn't work whether it should be uh, developed or whether it should be scrapped so uh, they can be extremely useful and um, the writers groups who uh, function within the center here very often organize their own readings so they have a public reading a public presentation of the work they have produced uh, for their friends and for the general public so it's a kind of a good stepping stone and especially if people are in any way bashful it gives them a kind of an intermediate stage between total privacy and total total public exposure and I can tell you for an awful lot of people that's very important. Everybody doesn't uh, start out with total self-confidence in what they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. It's got it's kind of a key difference between uh, a diff difference between it and a, and, a, and a writing course in that everyone in there is around the table and they're all kind of a, at an equal level, and it means that it can any any level of as you said bashfulness can. It's not going to be there because you're you you you're not going to be judged essentially. You're sitting you're sitting around in a room of your peers, um. That kind of brings me on to kind of my next question, which was about um writing courses. My first experience of the center was when I did a co was when I did a course here, um, and it's 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 one of the biggest services that you uh, that you offer is is writing courses. You obviously see a great merit in these courses. Yes, absolutely. Um. The courses, again, provide an opportunity for people uh, to get an, uh, an entry into uh, the whole writing uh, activity. Um, again, if somebody has a feeling, a hunch, that they would like to try writing something, uh, they may not know where to start. And a writing course can give them uh, some kind of foothold in the area and a bit of guidance you can't give people talent but you certainly can develop talent you know if people have the talent you can develop it and you can hone it and encourage it and um, stimulate people to push themselves to the limits so this is what uh, writing courses can do again as i say like 
uh, writing groups. It's up to the individual. Uh, some people prefer to beaver away in uh, the room by themselves, but lots of other people find this a very useful way to start. And all the courses that we provide are given by experienced writers who have, you know, a considerable career, a lot of experience behind them. So they aren't in a position to offer advice and um, young and beginner writers do uh, find that very, very useful. And what, ki what kind of courses, what kind of courses specifically do you, do you offer in relation to writing? Well, w you know, we have the scale where we can offer courses both at every level and in every genre. Um, you know, if somebody is a total beginner, we have beginner's courses which uh, don't uh, particularly dis discriminate between, say, prose and poetry or whatever. So uh, people can start out with a beginner's course. Then if they find that poetry is their particular interest, they can follow up with a, po a poetry course uh, or a short story course or uh, writing a novel. And as they develop, you know, we have more advanced courses, helping them to finish off a novel, finish off a collection of stories or poems, and uh, how to present it to um, publishers and agents and that type of thing. So we pitch different, uh, cor different um, uh, workshops at different levels so that people can use them as they go along. But the whole thing then, the whole... Um, uh, all of the creative writing workshops are part of a development program. We see them as a single program. And we also offer outlets that people can do public readings. And very often they do uh, present their work from the same podium as, for example, Seamus Heaney and John Banville uh, delivered uh, a reading from. Uh, that's a great boost to them when they're starting out. Um, when in certain workshops uh, a momentum is developed, a certain uh, group dynamic, and very often those people uh, continue on as a writing group afterwards, continue on, continue to meet maybe once a month or whatever, you know, and uh, continue to criticize each other, uh, support each other, etc. So the whole program is one big development program and the workshops are just parts of that big jigsaw yeah I mean, oh, th there's definitely a, a, um, a link between courses and, and groups and the, the, the first writing group that i joined that i, that I actually came from a writing course that, that i did yeah, five years ago and that kind of that evolved into a, into a writing group so it's safe to say that can the the writer center is the first port to call in for you know for for writing for writing courses in in, in dublin i mean i said i, I was going to ask you about specific courses but i said i think the best thing to do is just go over and visit uh, the website which is writercenter.ie um which i'll i'll put on the on our on our twitter feed after the show um so um have you found an uptake in the interest? Just one final question on writing courses in re in relation to in relation to kind of the recession and the the current climate. Have you found an uh, an uptake in the interest of the writing courses due to, you know, an increase in newly unemployed people essentially, um, who who want to be who have always wanted to be writers, and you know they now find themselves with the time, or is there a downturn due to you know less disposable income? Uh, there's certainly not a downturn. We find the demand uh, still very, very strong, and there may, in fact, be somewhat of an uptake uh, since the recession started. Um, it's very hard to gauge because, as you say, there are the two factors. First of all, more, p more people have more time, and on the other hand, <laughs> more people have less money. So um, it's hard to balance it out, but certainly people are still... Um, prepare to devote their disposable income to things that they feel are important. And if somebody feels that they want to write or are writing, then they will invest uh, some of their disposable income in that. Uh, absolutely. I mean, you, it's one of those things where you're going to look, look at the, the, long, the long game and you're going to think, well, if I, if I want to kind of commit myself to being a writer, 
um a, you know a course or a workshop is probably something that i did that i, that I need to invest in um how, how do you how do you reckon that the writing community in general is is bearing up to the the current recession well i mean i think that the recession is a disaster and um you know, we've got to look at it and take a very, very serious view of it. When you see major bookshops like Waterstones closing down, you've got to remember that that's books that are not being sold and writers who are not earning money as a result. The same with uh, festivals. You know, the Poetry Now Festival finished there this year. And, you know, the public might look on and say, oh, it's a pity we used to enjoy going there. But don't forget that that was an opportunity for writers to uh, earn some secondary earnings. They were paid for uh, uh, giving readings, etc. It was also an opportunity for writers and their publishers to promote and sell their books. So it has a knock-on effect in all kinds of ways. So the recession is an absolute disaster when you find that printers are closing down, publishers are closing down, bookshops are closing down. You know, we have got to um, look at the whole scene and come up with a national strategy on literature. Uh, and this must be radical and it must be comprehensive, you know, because, for example, the recent OECD report uh, showed that Ireland's literacy level was dropping. Now, if schools can't buy books for their school libraries, that's going to affect literacy. If they can buy books for their uh, school library, it helps publishers, it helps writers. So we have got to look at it and look at it radically and look at it very, very positively because the country is earning a fortune out of cultural tourism. Writers are earning billions every year for this economy. And, you know, we must remember that and we must also remember that you can't kill the hen that lays the golden eggs because then you will have no more golden eggs absolutely that's a, that's a, I, I certainly agree with what you're saying there I mean, it's a, it is a it's a it, it is a huge kind of uh, effect that a lot of people don't don't, don't realize on the on the cultural cultural side and you know the, the the likes of the um the tax breaks and all that kind of stuff going out as well in the in the recent budget um, will obviously have an effect on writers. Um, wh what are what are your future plans for the centre? Well, uh, first of all, the plan is to get more resources, financial resources, because as I say, at the moment it's being run on voluntary effort and this can't be sustained forever. We have got to get back to having core funding uh, and it should be coming from the Arts Council and they have got to look at it seriously because otherwise we won't be able to continue. But assuming that we will be able to continue, that we will get the resources, we have a lot of plans for expanding our programs on every front, uh, especially our artistic program, you know, to find new ways of presenting work to the public, to the readers, and thereby stimulating an extra interest in books and trying to get more people to buy more books. Um, we have also intentions of helping further to develop work. Say, for example, now we fitted out the lovely reading room, the one for public readings with uh, theatre lights and that, so we could develop uh, dramatic-type presentations. So uh, this would be a new development. Um, we also are working on the uh, rapport with young people. We have started an, an open mic session once a month called The Floor Show, uh, 